Well, I'm sitting here with an old friend. Old, old, old. <laughs> young, young friend. <laughs> with my young friend, he's younger than me. Uh, but you are a great grandfather. I am. See. So we've got some things to talk about. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that's going on right now in, in the, the, well, actually the whole world with the riots and all the things that are going on. And police chief James Hambrick, Brick, has a unique perspective on a lot of things. So stay tuned. Coming up next on The Odd Couple. Odd Couple. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. It's uh, it's good to be back and having coffee again together. We haven't done this for a while. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good to be back. Man. Exactly. And uh, we've been quarantined. Of course, I've been quarantined. You've been busy. A little bit busy. <laughs> so, James, we went through a tornado that devastated our city. And then we went through the the quarantine. In the middle of the quarantine, we had 75 mile an hour winds that that did a lot of destruction as well. I don't think there's a there's a, a house in the area that didn't have at least one tree down. Yes, and um, so we we had all of that. And then of course now we're in the middle of uh, a lot of unrest. And you've been busy. It's been busy. I've. Uh... It's been three months, I tell you, you know, the March 3rd, the tornado came through. Oh, that's right. And yeah. Then, um, three months. And then we had the COVID uh, come in. And then two months from that day, May 3rd, the, uh, what do they call it? The uh, destruction of winds. They have a, a, yes. a name for it, but those those winds, uh, strong line winds, straight line winds came through for devastation. And uh, now uh, we're dealing with different with the um, protests and, and different um, yes. destructions that we're dealing with, and it's been it's been uh, mentally and uh, emotionally exhausting. Uh, it, uh, and that monthly brings, occurrence, yeah, and that brings yeah. uh, also uh, impact uh, on you physically as well. But uh, God is still good; He's still on the throne, and uh, He's still He. He's, he's not some far, far away place like yes. like Shrek. He's here. <laughs> he is here, man. He's here, and we thank he God is, for He is him. large and in charge, Come isn't he? He is. So, James, you know, the, the quarantine, people staying home, it, it brought a, a few more difficulties. There was, well, I think you told me theft was up quite a bit in mm -hmm. the city. And shoplifting. Shoplifting, mm -hmm. and... And uh, you know, people mostly coming from other places to do that, and and now we have people coming from other places. It seems like um, to do well rioting, mm -hmm. and there's a difference between peaceful protest and rioting, as as we've seen. But I wonder if we could maybe zero in on that and talk about it from from your perspective, uh, from a police chief. Now we haven't had, at least that I know of, had had any problems. In right. Mount Juliet, but but you've been involved with the the Nashville metro area. I've seen you do some television interviews and different things, and and people are asking for your opinion sure. as a as a black man, as a police chief, uh, that you have a perspective, and and so let's chat about that. Let's do it. I um, sometimes we we talk about you know the elephant in the room and. Yes. People, people want to skirt around it, but uh, I don't like skirting around it. I like dealing with it. And there is, uh, first of all, we have to understand that here in America, there is still racism uh, that that's rampant. That's yeah. that's first. We we know that um, it is an issue, and it's an issue that that we have to have to deal with. Uh, when we look at the current event that uh, seemingly has. Uh, sparked outrage uh, with the uh, senseless uh, murder of, of George Floyd. Yes. And that's what I call it. I, I condemn it wholly. Uh, and if anybody has a, a problem, uh, don't have a problem after watching the video and looking at what transpired, if you don't have a, a problem with it, then uh, 
uh, that's an issue in itself. Uh, there yes. is a problem with it, and um, uh, I'm uh, am angered by it. Yes, uh, I'm angered by what it. What did you think well. when you saw that video? Um, what was your well, reaction? Is it, is it angered me uh, simply because of the fact that's not how we train. Yeah, uh, that's not what we're uh, called to do, uh, and and what I have looked at and watched. What especially is aggravating and, and angered me is that you have a gentleman that is in handcuffs. Yeah. My officers are, right, if you have a guy handcuffed, get him up, get him in the vehicle, and, and get him on the jail. There's no sense of, of knee, having your knee on his neck and in his back and all that. He's handcuffed. Get him up, get him in the vehicle, and get him on to, to booking. And it didn't that, appear to be a struggle. And that's it? what that's yeah. what should have happened uh, yeah. if you, and there, there are other things that um, have transpired, but it, it was senseless. Uh, I, I don't try to sugarcoat or try to butter it up. It is what it is. It, it was murder in my opinion. And uh, that's where we are. And so I'm angered about that. Uh, as, and protests have, have come along uh, yeah. as, a, as a product of that. But I want everyone to know, being being a black man, people said black chief, you're chief. Well, chief is a position I have, and they could fire me tomorrow, but I will still be a black man. Uh, and so, in dealing with with my perspective in blackness, the the rage is not just George Floyd. The rage is a, a combination of the atrocities and the systemic racism that, that has been, uh, that, that we as, as black uh, people here in America have been dealt with for a long, long time. And so it's been a compounding issue, even going back to Trayvon Martin and, and Mike Brown and Samir Rice, uh, Eric Gardner and, and others. Uh, so it's been a combination. And, and I understand people saying that, that, that we're tired. I don't condone, condone police brutality uh, in no way. Well, how can I say that? I've been in law enforcement now 25 years. I've had to make arrests. I've had to take people to jail. I've had to write citations uh, for speeding and whatnot. And those encounters uh, didn't go uh, like like these encounters. And when I've had to take people to jail. It's all about the attitude in which you do your job. Uh, that's important. And the compassion and yeah. the empathy that, that in which you do your job. And so you can affect arrests. Uh, without going to brutality, I don't don't deal with and con, uh, con, condone uh, police brutality by no means. Yes. And um, I think it's vile. I think it's absolutely wrong. And I think something has to be be done about it. And so, in saying that, I deal with um, all of these things. I understand the rage. I'm angered, but my position not as chief, not even as a black man, but as a follower of Jesus Christ, my response to anger can't be what we're seeing displayed by looting, by rioting, yes. by destruction and things Come like on. that. Yes. Uh, my response to anger has to be better and has to be something that will bring forth an issue. What has to happen, we have to get people together to talk and we have to be willing to listen and to hear one another. Um, but racism is something that, that is here and it will probably be here until the Lord comes back. Uh, I don't think we've got total eradicate uh, racism sadly. in America, yeah. sadly. Uh, but uh, we have to deal with it effectively. Again, our anger, your anger um, is uh, it's okay. You got to know that it's okay. The scripture says to be angered and sin not. And sin not. Yes. And so it's, it's what we do with anger, what we allow anger uh, to to have. And we can't allow anger to dominate us and, and take us to a place to where mm -hmm. we're not walking in the light. And he is, I was Absolutely. asked yesterday about, you know, what do we have to be? Well, the church has to be what she's called to be. We're called to be salt. We're called to be light. In this darkness, in this chaos, yes. we have to be the light and we have to stand up. We have to do it through the fruit of the Spirit, through goodness, through love, through peace, through joy. All of those things 
we have to bring into this darkness and this chaos. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it starts not with people want to say, well, we, we it starts, we got to get together and it starts with a movement. No, you know who it starts with? It starts with you. It now, starts see, with me. That, because everybody's trying to figure out how to channel this, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are enraged by what we saw. And sure. We do see the injustice and people have a valid sure. reason for protesting. Sure. And our country is based on peaceful protest, peaceful, yeah. you know, uh, expression. Yeah. Peaceful. Peaceful. You need a voice. You, a a yes. protest is a place where uh, you give voice to uh, an injustice and in, in things. And yes. there's nothing wrong with that. I, I applaud that, uh, the peaceful protest. I think that's something that that is necessary. But all of the other things, uh, all of the, the destruction and, and people from outside and, and influence and coming into communities and understanding that when people are, are damaging businesses, just to say, man, that particular person didn't have anything to do yes. with what went on. Uh, and then you're just setting back and, and making matters worse by damaging your communities and, and communities and, and damaging and affecting people's livelihood and lives that have absolutely nothing uh, to do. They feel like you feel. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, many of them. And so uh, we have to do something different. We can be better and we should be better. And uh, somebody has, to, has to, to stand up again and this is a, we, you talked about the quarantine um, a little bit ago. And I believe what God was showing us is that we have, have made church the place that we go to. Mm. And it's defined what church is. Yes. And so in the quarantine, when you couldn't get to the building, when God stripped away the building, yeah. the church still has to, be the church and Amen. so we found out that God has pulled us back that no the church is not that building it's you yes it's my yes. people <laughs> it's my people and, and so, if it took the quarantine to learn that yeah bring it on huh? yeah we had to yeah. be refocused and yes uh, we do that's where we uh, have to be that we are the church it's not the building that that's we right. go to it's not a, a, a place of uh, entertainment that that building is a sanctuary and a house of worship but we are Yes. You and I, we are the church. Absolutely. Right? We're the church. Well, so for people who are feeling like they're, I need to express this. I need to get the anger out. I need to, I need to let people know what I'm feeling. I need to be part of a, of a bigger movement. I need to, you know, to let out my frustration, all of that. Peaceful protest is, is, one way to begin to express what you feel. But James, you said it goes deeper than that. It's it's individual. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little more. Well, again, how you allow things to impact you matters. And it starts with, it, everyone has to have the mindset that it starts with me. It's not, what are, what are they gonna do about it? Mm. It's really not what are we going to do about it. It starts with what am I going yes. to do about it. And not just waiting for somebody yeah. else to do something. And so, and when I'm yeah. talking about doing something, uh, we got to respond in goodness. And we uh, found out that goodness, uh, a fruit of the spirit, Lord to goodness, goodness is the opposite of evil. And so we have to respond That's in good. goodness. In spite of what somebody does to us, we have to respond in goodness. We can't go back uh, to the law area in scripture where Paul was, was warning us against, uh, we have to, to be spiritual and we have to walk in goodness. And we can't go again, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And we can walk and allow the flesh to dominate us. Yes. Because the flesh always wants to get even. All right? Absolutely. Flesh wants to, hey, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. That's what the flesh does. And don't you think we feel justified to, to hate the haters? Yeah, we can't do that. Our response yeah. has to be goodness. Our response has to be 
love and encouragement. Jesus said, "Yeah, yeah." Hey, bless them that that persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Yes, you might say. He says they they did that to the prophets which were before us, and so he said we we have a great response, and we have a, a power, and that power is called love. Yes. And that should be our response at this hour. Uh, love again, and unity. In you? Yeah. Too. And unity doesn't come from looking at color or race. No. It really comes from the heart. That's it. Because, you know, we, we call ourselves the odd couple, not just because we're odd, <laughs> but our close friendship is yeah. odd. We, we couldn't be more opposite, probably, right. as far as, you know, socially and yet none of these things are a barrier mm -hmm. you know now um, James is not quite as good looking as I am right. but I love him anyway that's you right. know. Hey. <laughs> everybody hey everybody can get it bro <laughs> everybody can't have it yeah but you know the the thing that we share is the same we really do have very similar hearts and when we get together, as we do every week, and have coffee and talk, and um, you know, our friendship is very genuine. But it's, but it's there because we have a camaraderie right. in the Lord that that supersedes all of the other things. And and I think James, that's where we have to get to in the United States and in every country that's going through this. Right. I, you know, I. I just tell them believers, man. Um, and people saying, what are you going to do? They, I, they've asked me, well, Chief, with, with all these things, you know, what are you going to do now? Mm -hmm. What is it going to do? I said, we're going to do what we've been doing. There you go. The strategy we, we, hasn't changed. We, we, we've been trying to build better relationships within our communities. We've bridged some things. We've had things to try to be professional, be approachable, uh, walk in integrity, police with integrity, do those things. We've been doing that, so we're going to continue to yeah. do that. And it's not that we're perfect, but we have been striving to build wholesome relationships within our community yeah. for a long time, and we've been doing that. And we're going to continue to do that. And so from a church perspective, from a believer's perspective, what should we do? Well, we don't have to come up with a new program and a new mantra and anything. We have the word of God that never changes. Yes. The Hebrew writer said this, Jesus, the same yes, yesterday, today, 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 and forevermore. Yes, it doesn't change. We, have, we have just need to walk in what we've been given. It doesn't change. We don't have to come up with something different, something new. We need to do and be who God has called us to be. We need to be the church. The church needs to be a, we are salt, we are light, and we need to be that. And we need to demonstrate that at this hour. Absolutely. Not come with some, trying to come up with some new program, uh, some new form or form. We need to walk in what God has already given us and laid out. And we need to do that in love. Bro. And James, there are so many voices that are talking about what are the answers? What is the, uh, what's the problem and how do we fix it? And some people say, well, you gotta take all the guns away from people, then that would fix the problem. And then of course only criminals would have guns if we did that. Then, and and I was disappointed to see the Black Lives Matter come out with, you know, defund the police. We just, uh that's that's nonsense what we have to do is walk and build relationships and this is somebody i was asked well if you could sum it up in one word what would the one word be i said outside of love the one word would be respect we have to respect one another Absolutely. in spite of differences in spite of of color in spite of everything if we respect one another and we go back to that golden rule that we learned as a child that we treat others as we want to be treated when we do that, man, that's on, that's on, it's so simple that it becomes profound in a way. Absolutely. And James, your, uh, your whole job as, as the police chief in our city is that, isn't it? Respect. It's we got to respect. And you train your police officers to respect the people and to serve yeah. the community. Yeah. And not every, not every community does that. Right. Not every police force is like that. Right. But you've had tremendous success here in this city because of 
your perspective right. and what your job is all about. Well, policing in America for a long time, um, I've said it before, you've heard me say it before, that it was a us against them mentality. I've never policed yeah. that way. It's not us against them. We are them. We are <laughs> and, them. Uh, yeah. we, you know, we're together. And so we know that we uh, affect change. There are times when we have to issue citations, make arrests and whatnot. But what, it, it's the manner in which we do it. It's the attitude. I tell yes. our people it's the attitude in which we do it. And we can do that uh, in a wholesome way because our authority, again, I said our training, Basic training came from the police academy, but our authority comes from God himself. There you go. And when we walk in that authority and that integrity, and when we police with uh, just professionalism, with integrity, then uh, we do the things that are pleasing to him. Yes. And it's not just about uh, how our aim, I mean, our aim and my aim and goal as an agency head is to uh, have our, our men and women who um, we serve police in a manner that's going to bring glory and honor to God. Absolutely. And James, it's um, it's it's not about arresting someone and punishing them. I know you've told me several times that for you, it's how can I help you? That's it. How did you get to this place and how can we help you? Sure through this difficult time of your life and be productive sure. and you guys have been proactive with it. And people think, uh, you know, that I, I'm fibbing when I tell, but I'm not. I mean, 90% of the people that I've take, taken to jail in my career thanked me for it when the wow. time we got there. Because uh, for those that don't know, our, our jail is in uh, another city within our county. So it, it takes about uh, 20 minutes or so to get there. And so on that ride, uh, being able to speak something into their lives at that that's time awesome. and yes. pray for them. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, is and do you have an good. opportunity to do that sometimes sure. too? Sure. That's yeah. great. As well. yeah. And we've seen that, that change and we've seen that be able to um, impact those individuals more. And I've had people that have even went to prison, man, that, that when they've gotten out, they've come back to my office and said, man, I want to thank you. Really? For we yes. That's so awesome. this is about the way you carry yourself and about the way you treat humanity. Based, not based on the color of their skin, not based whether they're a gang member or not, because I'm talking about people that were in gangs and people that were in the criminal element that when they got out of prison, they came back and they said, man, thank you. Matter of fact, they brought, some of them have brought other people to me. So I want to introduce you and, okay. to this man. So, yeah. And it's about, I don't pat myself on the back for that. That's all God. Yeah. That's all God. But, just but, trying to be but a you're best. doing something right, James. Well, we're trying. Yeah. We're trying our best. Well, there's so many organizations out there that are fighting this. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting a new organization, by the way. It's called White Heavy Metal Pastors Matter. What do you think? <laughs> Will it work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but people got, matter. People matter, man. All and, that. Uh, and I don't discredit black life. Black lives do matter. Absolutely. And again, yes. Uh, yes. the rage comes from being a compound and a combination of things. Because uh, this is, and I'm just speaking for real, uh, that uh, black men, uh, black men are killed in the same, if you put the same scenario in place, black men are killed two and a half times more than, than other men, but then white men are killed really? in the same circumstances. Wow. So there is a a problem, yeah. but uh, how we address the problem can't be by creating yes. another problem. Yes, We have to do it wholesome and we have to do it uh, with love. And uh, again, we have to do it with goodness. Um, I, there's an old adage that says, man, kill them with kindness. And so the enemy, that's really our enemy, it's not a white man, a black man. We're not the enemy. Of the, we have an enemy. Yes. And it comes from the fall. And the enemy, the scripture says, we wrestled not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against wickedness in high places. Yes. And he's come to make a divide. He wants to divide. The scripture also said that the thief who we're talking about, Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. 
But Jesus says, I'm come that you may have life and that you may have it in an abundant way. And that's what he wants to bring. And so black lives matter, Hispanic lives matter, white lives matter, you know, all lives matter. When we really get down to the nitty gritty of everything that's going on, we're gonna find out that we're not dealing with any kind of flesh issue, really. We're dealing with a soul issue and we're dealing with a sin issue. Yeah. And if we're gonna change anything, we're gonna to have to get to that root. And so um, we have work to do. We do. And, and here's the good news. Jesus died on the cross for sin. Yeah. He took it away. Come on, come on. And the scripture says that he whom the Son sets free Hallelujah. is free indeed. indeed. That's yes. our position in Christ. Yes. And yet so many people are in bondage, and you may be one of those today. You feel bondage, you feel anything but free. Yeah. And the Bible says we just need to take it. Yes. Jesus um, used this example of a house. And in the house was, well, a person that was a slave in the house. And slaves in those days were usually one family that owed a debt to another family. And, and one of their children many times would become a slave or a servant or whatever in this household. And then he said, but, but as time goes on and the son of the person who owns the house takes over the house and he dismisses that person that was a slave, he said, then at that point, that slave is free indeed. No yeah. questions asked, he's free to go. And Jesus used this example for us when he says, you know, you are truly free, yes. truly free. Truly free. So James, not only are we free, but we have to accept our freedom. And, you know, he says, don't return again to a yoke of bondage, but be free. So. And then, you know, it's redundant almost when, when we read the, the scripture that says, you know, it's for freedom that Christ set us free. And we say, well, Paul, you're just being redundant. And no, he isn't, because we don't get it. We talk about freedom, mm -hmm. but we don't understand what it means. And you've laid that out, James. Yeah, we it's, it's that organic part of our lives that we just need to be free. Yeah, I... Uh... I will say this too to, to everybody watching. When we look at the atrocities uh, that is police brutality, understand this, that that's a very small fraction of the law enforcement community. Mm. I want you to know that. I mean, there are good men and women in law enforcement oh, yeah. across the globe yes. that are doing good work honorable work, yes. professional work, work with integrity every day. The great that majority. Are little, I mean, the great yes. majority, man, are, are doing great work. Yes. And it's it's the few that that I know what happened in Minneapolis and other places, and they, they say the old Southern word, y'all. Yeah. It's all y'all. <laughs> but man, I, I understand that, but I'm telling you, there are good men and women yes. that are working on your behalf daily man daily and and they they love what they do they're they're called to serve and they're trying their best to police with honesty and with integrity uh, because they have a heart to help people and you you're know? one of those one that's what i do brother it's yeah. uh it's it's all about uh being a servant and so i just wanted to to say that because uh Important. i don't want that to get lost in translation yes. uh, at this hour when so much is uh, going on and so much divide is occurring. Um, can it get better? It certainly can. Will yeah. it get better? We, God, hey, we're gonna trust and depend on the Lord, man. Yes. And, and walk in his integrity. And so we have work to do. And as I told our group last night, hey, let's not just talk about it. Let's be about it. Let's do it. Good, I like that. Yeah. Let's be about it. Let's be about it, man. You heard that. <laughs> well, folks, thank you for joining us thank again. You. And James, we're going to get a little more regular now in doing our odd Praise couple. God. Praise It'll God. be a little more produced in the future, too. I apologize that we don't have a lot of good production here, but we're together, though. 
you know, when, when you're as good looking as we are, you don't need a lot of production, do you? My Lord. <laughs> See, that's it. Well, folks, thanks for joining us. I, um, I, I pray that this ends soon, yes. but it's you and I that are going to make that happen. Yes. And the answer isn't to be, to be hating the people that are hating or judging the people that are confused and maybe going out of their own limits, but really begin to love, love, love. love, love. And, you know, the old adage says, love conquers all, but Christ's love conquers all. That's it. And as we go forward and as we are the church, as he just yes. said, people together, that kind of love. Yes. That's what we need. That's what we need. Bro. Yes. Well, thanks for watching. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Peace. Oh,